Welcome to Right on the Money, the weekly talk show with interviews you can use to help you maximize your money and optimize your financial future. Before moving forward with any of the ideas discussed on the show, always consult your financial advisor, insurance professional, or tax consultant. Looking for financial help or a second opinion? We can help you in your search. And now, your host of Right on the Money, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator, Steve Savant. Well, welcome everyone to our tribute to small business and the backbone and economic engine of America. And with me today is a small business owner and entrepreneur, Jasmine Nakata. Welcome to Right on the Money, Jasmine. Thank you very much, Steve. Well, I have to say, first of all, you've got to have a business. You're from Hawaii. I can't think of any place else to camp my actual career and have a huge vocation. I mean, talk to me a little bit about business in Hawaii. First of all, the scenery alone Mm -hmm. is breathtaking. Absolutely. I mean, Hawaii is definitely a beautiful place. We're so lucky and blessed to be able to live and raise a family there. Uh, The unfortunate part, though, you know, as far as owning a business is concerned, a lot of people, they don't plan for the cost of living. You know, an average price of milk there is roughly around $6. I don't know if you knew that. A a gallon? Yes. No, Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, what are you paying for gas right now? It's about $2.50. 250. Well, that's not mm-hmm. too bad, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm thinking, you know, the cost, the real estate costs are are just unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Out there. Median price of a home there is seven hundred and twenty thousand dollars on the main island. Three quarters of a million. Seven hundred and twenty thousand. Now you work on mm-hmm. two islands. Your business actually covers two islands, and I hear you're expanding to a third island. Talk to me about which islands and why are you expanding to the third? Yeah, actually, you know, we're pretty blessed to be able to have this business. Um, our main office actually opened on the main island on Honolulu, where we have our office there. Uh, we recently, in the last two years, have been on the big island of mm. Hawaii in Hilo, um, the main city. And uh, we are looking to expand our office to a third island, which would be mm. Maui. I'm not exactly sure what city we're going to go ahead and plan ourselves, mm-hmm. but yeah, we're definitely looking to expand our business. Now, there, there are how many? There are a lot of small businesses in the in the islands mm-hmm. of Hawaii. So I mean, really, you are really not only are you doing two islands, now you're going to a third island. Mm-hmm. That's transportation issues too. I mean, you can't you can't take a boat to this. You're flying to these islands, right? Yeah, we used to be able to take a boat um, at one point, but yeah, we are definitely are, are only relying on the hmm. airplane transportation or airfare transportation to get us there. And the cost there is roughly around two hundred dollars round trip. Um, and so my husband Kane, who is also going to be a guest on the show, is going to talk to you, um, you know, a little bit more about hmm. that. But two hundred dollars per week, which equates to about close to $1,000 per month, just going back and mm. forth. Now, the, the small businesses that you deal with, do they also have multiple islands that they have to think about? Yes, yeah, some of them do. Mm-hmm. Um, some of them don't. You know, it kind of depends on the business. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, so you started your business. Why did you select business succession planning, exit strategies? Why did, why did you choose this? I mean, just, you're a, you're a millennial. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're uh, in the business now for about five years. Mm-hmm. Why did you choose this aspect of it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, Steve. Actually, to be very honest with you, we fell upon it by accident. Mm. Um, but in the interim of us, you know, really sitting down with a lot of our business owners, we found that there is a lot of concerns for them. And you find it very far and few that actual people are actually planning for when these times do occur as far as succession, exit strategies, and when the planning does not happen, well, you know, Steve, mm-hmm. businesses often close and or, or taken on to the next generation, and that that timeline or, or what happens there isn't always the best. Well, you now, you, are you working with mostly baby boomer business owners mm-hmm. or more towards the millennial or the Generation X? You know, we have a variety, but our, our main target market right now is really working with a lot of the baby boomer generation. Um, you know, it's pretty interesting as far as you asking that question because we had to go through like a lot of businesses, you, you know, like as experimenting mm-hmm. what market are we going to really work in and mm-hmm. what market is going to yield us the results that we essentially want to of course, mm-hmm. earn a profit. Um, and, and what we found is segmentation, you know, um, as far as targeting a specific mm-hmm. market, baby boomers right now, they need a lot of planning. They do have, you know, mm-hmm. accumulated X amount of assets and whatnot. If you go into a generation that's a lot younger, they're still starting. Mm-hmm. It's There's not very much um, sometimes that we can do. There is, you know, in situations, things that we can do, mm-hmm. but we, our focus right now really is a lot of the baby boomers. Okay, generation. so if I have a millennial mm-hmm. business owner, like mm-hmm. you are, 
but you're working with people that are really your parents' age, right? right. Now, now how, what's that generational issue, just from a business point of view? Well, I, I think the most important part, Steve, is that you come from a place that you, you are always genuinely concerned. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what age I think they are. Millennials, baby boomers, mm -hmm. you know, our grandparents' generation, and so on and so forth. Um, when you approach it in such a way that the individual sitting across the mm -hmm. table from you really knows that you care about them and you are able to kind mm -hmm. of break down their walls um, and, and also the art of the sale, create mm -hmm. a little bit of doubt there, they, they mm -hmm. oftentimes will be able to open their doors to you and listen to you. But, you know, of course, that comes with some training. <laughs> it does. <laughs> well, now I notice that a lot of baby boomers are really a sm small business owners are actually depending on the sale of their business to fund their retirement and they have nothing else, no 401k, no Roth IRAs, they have no other cash positions. They've really put, they're all in on their business. Mm -hmm. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about that because that's kind of scary. Yes, absolutely. And um, you know, as far as getting a valuation done on, on your business, I think that's the most important part. Um, when we put all of our eggs into just this one basket and then when we're looking to leave and we you know, find out later that that's ex not exactly the amount that we are expecting to get in the return, mm -hmm. that's a huge blow you know, mm -hmm. to you know, our whole planning. Um, so when it comes to uh, that whole part as far as um, you know, making sure that a business owner has an adequate amount of retirement assets to plan upon. That's really what we try to specialize in. And that's in. separate from their business though, yes. right? Okay, mm -hmm. do you find that most people are overvaluating their mm -hmm. businesses? Oh yes, absolutely. Um, y you know, it it's funny that you, you asked that question because we tend to really be focused just on our business mm -hmm. as a business owner just like how we, we talked about before, focusing just on what we do on a day in and day out basis. Unless someone really comes in to talk about these things mm -hmm. as far as planning mm -hmm. or, um, you know, we have a friend that says, hey, have you really gotten a business valuation done? I think you should do that. We don't even think about that because mm -hmm. we're just so involved in the day to day operations. So, so of our you business. really need somebody to interrupt your day, daily grind and mm -hmm. bring these things up. Right. So you're not surprised at the end game. Absolutely not. Interesting enough, I was watching Shark Tank and I can't remember, and I've been watching it for a good year now, and I can't remember too many people that have evaluated their businesses. And mm -hmm. a lot of these people don't have assets when they're doing first startups, like you were talking about younger people, millennials. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that they're like two, three times valuation. That's mm -hmm. it, your income. That's mm -hmm. your net income. Mm -hmm. And that's the number they're looking at. Mm -hmm. So when I have boomers uh, like myself, I'm over evaluating, thinking that it has a greater value, greater net worth. And it really, and really, how shocking is it for you to have to bring people to a new horizon, a new understanding that their dream is probably about half their value? Right, and that's where we come in, you know, as a company to be able to understand that it's a process mm -hmm. that we take our clients through. You know, every single person is made differently. Every single financial plan that an individual or goal that an individual has, a business owner's goal, is going to be ultimately different from the next person. Mm -hmm. So, is there anything universal though that's true no matter who they are? You're customizing, you're tailoring, but are there any universal aspects of businesses that are common to everybody? Um, what do you mean by that? Well, for example, like, well, we may all have different approaches to our business. Our businesses may be different, but there's certain things like, yes, we're not taking advantage of tax strategies. We're not taking advantage of retirement income. We, there's certain things that are true for everybody. Mm -hmm. And do you have the ability to, even though you're customizing the plan, can I also say, well, there's going to be some things here that are true for everybody? I don't think so. You so know, you think everybody's is really that tailored? It, it really has to be because mm -hmm. there's no two businesses that are alike. Just like, you know, as I mentioned before, there's no two people. I like the tax, mm -hmm. you know, the taxes that you mentioned earlier, you know, that's going to differ from business to business, depending on how much a business mm -hmm. is taking in, how much is going out, what type of business it, it, it's mm -hmm. being set up. At. Is it an S corporate? Is it an S corp? Is it a C corp? Mm -hmm. Is it a sober partnership? Is it a partnership? You know, those types of things all need to be taken mm -hmm. under, you know, the magnifying glass. And, you know, now, does separate. your process then allow for that kind of scrutiny and customization? Yes, where we run a pretty complex process, you know, 
as far as explaining it, but we have to simplify it for a lot of our business owners. Well, remember, if you're listening to our show on radio, iTunes, or podcasts, you can visit our video version online at rightonthemoneyshow.com and request information from this segment. In our next segment, we'll be talking about how to target your company's revenue goals with Jasmine Nakata. We'll be right back after the break. For more information on this week's money topics, just go to our website at www.rightonthemoneyshow.com and follow Steve's daily postings on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. When it comes to retirement, money management, small business, insurance coverage, college funding, or budgeting, we have the interviews you can use.